So next up it's Galaxy Trooper. Not one of the, one of the most exciting figures. So it's got black trousers with um, grey shin pads or shin guards. It's got a very basic black torso. It's got a um, this piece of moulded shoulder armour. Uh, a bit of insignia on the front. It's got some like a crest there and some sort of badge there. It's got a kind of robotic looking well I think it's I think that's supposed to be his visor. So when he has the, the helmet it looks like he's got his visor down. It looks like he's got something around his eye there, which I think it's so that when he looks through the visor, it's like he's getting some sort of targeting or something. He's got a grey helmet, kind of like bolts on the side, which make it look a bit like he had a visor, but he doesn't actually have a visor. And then he just has two pistols, laser pistols, probably. There he is. It's not the most exciting, but Galaxy Trooper. So next up, we've got um, Lady Cyclops. I've really um, seen a female Cyclops before. She's got kind of ripped. Well, I say ripped, jagged. Let's say um, green. Is it a smock or an apron or something? I don't know what you call kind of cave money clothes. It's that type of thing. It's got this cool head with one big blue, um, well, one big yellow eye with like a blue eyelid, I guess, and a big eyelash. One big um, mouth and two little teeth poking out. That's quite nice, actually. Do like that. She's got the Cyclops head. Like you get the green Cyclops, but this one's grey. Um, and it's got two tusks, a, a spike on the top, a horn on the top, ears, a little hole for the uh, eye to come through, and it's got this little kind of like pink lips, or purple lips. And then she has the one accessory, the big massive club, which is grey, so I'm guessing it's a, it's a stone club. There she is in all the glow. She's quite unique actually to be fair. She's not too bad. And that's Lady Cyclops. Next up we've got the Fencer. So she's got, well she has it's a he actually. I think it's a he. She's got some white, um, let's call them britches. I'm not entirely sure what they're called. Um, it's got a white fencing jacket. Defensive logo, one white glove. This um, little side grin face. And then it's got this, which is a foil. That's quite cool. Headguard. And there's this, which is a sabre. Apparently, I always thought a thin sword was a foil. But that's short and sweet but there he is in all his glory it's quite nice the fencer so next up is the samurai and this is a lady so it's got some sort of footwear boots so it can be hard to tell with these obviously start with the arm armor here um, the samurai arm is really complicated, it has tons and tons of pieces and each little tiny piece has a name so I don't actually know all the different names. So that's kind of like the under heart, under arm, but that's a bit like a, a bit like a gi, um, which is like a jacket for um, martial arts. This is just like, it's got like a um, fabric belt. And it's got this big massive chest piece of armour which would be made of bamboo. That's quite cool. 
lady's head. She might be a lady, but she certainly means business. This molded hair piece, the bun, the back, and then she has two accessories, which is two katanas. She's very skilled to wield two katanas because they're exceptionally sharp, but she doesn't have any um, sheaths or scabbards or whatever you want to call them. But there she is, the samurai. So next up is the Egyptian warrior. She's got, well, he, sorry. I don't know why I think these are all ladies. She's got some kind of bottom part of some some sort of robe. I'm not sure what Egyptian robe's called. It's got kind of that crisscross work and like a tie, there's like a bow tie type thing at the front. Continuation of the robe at the front. Should put that on correct. And as I with all these Egyptians, I've got kind of like a jeweled or maybe it's just decorative, not actual jewels, but uh, um, like a collar or a necklace or something. It's got a stern face. And then we've got this headpiece, which I believe is called a nemes or something like that. With a gold gold trim, so it's fabric. And I'm brightly coloured with a gold trim. Two accessories. Shield. Which has got the some sort of crest on there. Start off some sort of crest. And then this Egyptian sword. Which is called a Kopesh. There we go. So it can strike and defend. Or he can strike and defend. And there it is in all its glory. The Egyptian warrior. So up next we've got the goblin. The goblin's got, I would say, their bare feet is a goblin. This kind of um, jagged, ripped brown trousers with a patch, and as he's a goblin, he hasn't really got a lot of money to spend on clothes. He's got a belt made from some um, rope. It's just got like an undershirt and then a waistcoat, brown waistcoat, tied up with a, with a, some more some sort of lace, and he's got a patch on the front. So like the witch, he can't really afford new clothes. Let's see what his head's like. So his head's quite, it's quite mean looking actually. I thought he'd be more mischievous, but he looks actually quite very, properly mean. Glowing yellow eyes, sharp teeth, menacing looking. He's got a cute goblin hat. A patch on the front. So just like a witch, can't really afford a new hat, it's to keep patching up and it's got built in ears, which means you can kind of use that hat on someone else. And he's got two accessories, this really big, sharp, but sort of beaten and gnawed away um, blade. And then what oh, goblin would be complete without a sack to, I guess, I don't want to really, really want to uh, put goblins down, but I'm guessing is it's for, for stealing. So there he is in all his glory. It's quite nice, actually. Goblin. So next up is the paleontologist. Now, this is someone that digs up bones. This is a girl. So she's got socks on, which is quite common. I'm going to say that they're socks, I don't think they're boots. I think it's the top of some striped, really long, pulled up socks. Um, and she'd be wearing shorts. That's the sort of typical outfit for someone that's going to be uh, digging up fossils. Got a black belt, a brownish shirt with um, pockets, and a um, light brown or cream neck scarf, rolled up sleeves. Serious face, glasses, and little, they so slightly pink lips. It's a really nice piece of hair. 
Uh, so a headpiece, I guess, with um, brownish hair and a really cool um, hat, kind of an explorer's hat. I guess it's just some sort of hat for someone where it's hot because it's got a nice big brim. That's nice. And then she's got two accessories a bone. It's not a very big bone. This fossil, which is a ammonite. There she is, in all their glory. The paleontologist. So next up is the carpenter. So this is a proper working man. He's got blue trousers, proper work trousers. Um, and he's got like a tool belt with two different types of screwdrivers some pliers, it's very detailed actually, a small, I'm not sure if that's a ruler or a file, I'm gonna, I'm gonna go for a ruler, it's got a belt, it's got a sensible polo shirt, with a bit of chest hair and he's got his little crossed saws, not swords, crossed saws on the chest, this is his logo. He's got a quite a fairly happy face, not a smile, but a little bit of stubble. And quite a fancy style. And obviously he's safety first. He's probably self-employed. So he's got some hair. And he's got his all important hard heart. Keep himself when he's safe when he's building with Emmett. He's got this saw. He's got this piece of wood. Oops. So there he is with his accessories, his saw and his wood. And there he is in all his glory. The carpenter. So next up is the evil wizard. Now this guy has two things. He's a, he has a hell of a lot of parts. And I like to call him Ming the Merciless. So he's got a, a wizard's robe, which is like a two stage thing. I'm not quite sure what, what goes on with wizards. They kind of wear like, I don't know what to call it, but it's like a robe inside a robe. He's got the, the light colored robe there, and then he's got the dark, slightly more burgundy with the gold trim. This is quite tricky to build. So he's got a continuation of the robe with a skull halfway up and then, then this, these are the bits that get a bit tricky. So he's got his cape, which I'm guessing it should, should go that way. I think the black part on the outside. And then he has this rough, let's call it. And then luckily he's got a bounce to hold it down. He's not very happy. I guess if I had to go for that much faff to put my clothes on, I wouldn't be too happy. He's got red eyes. He's got a big um, scar across one of them. A sort of raised up eyebrows, a furrowed brow, a, a, a sad face. He's not a happy bunny. And we've also forgot to put his beard on. So we'll put his beard on first. He's got a very long. Cool beard, actually, that's quite nice because it could use that on other characters. I am Ming the Merciless. Then he's got this complicated staff, which I'm probably going to build wrong. But let's go for that. So he can fire, up, fire out of his staff. There we go. There he is in all his evil glory. And that is the evil wizard. And next up, we've got the sweet, sweet hot dog man. Sweet, sweet hot dog man. Basic on the inside, but oh, so sweet and mustardy on the outside. Smile a little face. Basic clothes. It's not very much to it. It's all down to his friend, the foam hot dog costume. 
Look at that beauty. Simple man. Boosh, hot dog. Boom, hot dog man. Sweet, sweet hot dog man. What more is there to say? Next up to charm his effect is way into your affection. It's the snake charmer with his white legs and the bottom of his green robe. Actually, I don't know what that what that's called, but it's like a really long. I think it's like an Indian piece of clothing. It's a really long kind of shirt. Obviously, it's got an official name, but he's got these beads and a gold little gold kind of pendant on a, on a piece of um, cord. He's got this um, printed moustache, which is fairly, fairly rare. It seems fairly rare. So he could basically upgrade to a full plastic moustache or even a full a plastic um, beard if he really wanted to. He's quite surprised at something. Maybe it's a snake, I guess. But maybe it rised up out of a pot and he wasn't expecting it. He's got this sweet, sweet turban. Look at that beauty. And he's got his two accessories. He's got his, uh, I don't know if that's a sticker. I'm, I'm going to have to be a flute, isn't it? Something like a flute. And then we'll put his little slithery friend, who was a cobra. It was pretty nice on his own. Next one. All together, very nice. There they are, in all their glory. Snake Charmer. Next up, it's the Sheriff. So don't be eyeballing me, Sean. This man's got a serious moustache. Before that, he's got his brown trousers and his holster. Belt. Got a nice shirt with a kind of Dixie bow tie or something you call them, I'm not sure. Tied in high collar. He's got his uh, sheriff badge, brown waistcoat, his little um, like um, watch chain thing. Nothing on the back. He's got his sweet, sweet brown mustache. What as if you could be a sheriff without a mustache? I mean, I don't even know if you'd be allowed to be a cop without a mustache if we've been serious so it can hide whatever his face is because it's just it's all moustache so it's 50% moustache he's got um, puzzled eyes like he's uh, in, a, in a shootout he's got a really cool hat show his badge on there he's, he's looking pretty pretty dapper I have to say he's looking very good he's got two accessories the old uh, six shooter. And his wanted poster. You seen this man around these parts, son? There we have him. In all his glory. Take no prisoners. Look at that beauty. The sheriff. And next up, she is D I S C O. She is D-I-S-C-O. It's the Disco Diva. Purple trousers with funky sides. A funky, sweet, sweet, looped metal um, silver ring belt. Be um, Mid-drift, the tied top. With some sort of pattern on there, that circles. Pattern on the back, very patterned actually. Patterned arms. She's out to impress. She's got this happy face. And what disco, disco person will be complete without her star shades? This is a massive mop of curly hair. That's nice. That's nice and good solid bit of moulded hair. And then she's got this accessory of a microphone. Now that would be quite good. She's not just a disco diva. She's a rollo disco diva. So she's got roller skates. So 
She can go to the roller rink. Do some serious disco moves. There she is, she's pretty good. And she also, she's so good, in fact, she goes on a base with the roller skates on. Well, the, yeah, roller skates. Look at that. That is a beauty. She is an absolute beauty. There she is. In all the glory. She is quite a disco diva, but I think she should be roller disco diva. Next up, we've got the Alien Trooper. This is this intergalactic traveller. It's got blue space age material trousers with weird sort of panelling on the front. Maybe they're incredibly long pockets. And a little three dotted space belt. It's got this body. Also, which means it joins up. I'm not sure whether about space people are this kind of like material, but it is pretty funky. It's got this ribbed purple material um, as part of the styling of his suit. And then he's got his, maybe this is his logo actually. He's got well, he's got he's got more circles on the front. I don't know if that's functional or whether that's his logo. He's got it looks a bit like paneling or something on the back, but I think it's just to make him look stylish. I don't think it's his backpack, but look at this head. You're going to ask yourself, who came first? Zoidberg, the oobs from um, Doctor Who, or this guy? He's got some really nice patterning on the on the top, a bit like a turtle. He's got this squid, squid head going on, blue eyes. And the only disappointing thing is it's not it doesn't sort of fit over a normal head, but I guess it wouldn't make much sense. Then he's got his ray gun. That's his only real accessory. Not sure what that ray gun's got a hook for there. There we go. There he is in all his glory. It's pretty nice. It's pretty unusual. To you, he is the alien trooper. Next up, galloping onto your screens from a nursery nearby is the unicorn girl. So she's another one of these continuation of figures that went they like to call them costume figures. I don't know if that's the name that someone made up, but it's a bit like you can imagine it being a person dressing up in it rather than the other ones, it's their actual kind of life. So she's got a start of little hooves. She's got this cool little ponytail, purple tail, which is like the lot of the others can go up or down. So with the horse flapping it up, the horse flapping it down. I'll put it down. Fairly basicish body, but these coloured um, stars. What kind of expression she got? That's a cute little little girl expression. Just so sort of neutral. And then this sweet, sweet unicorn head. Look at that! Just marvel at that beauty for a moment. Purple mane, horn, slot for eyes, boosh. There she is, in all the glory. Ready to entertain, ready to trot. It's the unicorn girl. So here he is by royal appointment. You might call him your majesty or your highness, but we call him the classic king. So he's got red boots. Blue pantaloons with yellow and red stripes. A uh, blue sort of torso with red arms. A um, yellow and red striped um, sort of chest. I don't know what, what that's called. Let's call it a body warmer. A uh, chain. And then he has this, um, it's quite a, he has some quite elaborate clothing actually. He has this uh, red cape. Then he has this piece, which is called a ermine. It's quite tricky to get on. And ermine is made from stoats fur. So there we have him with his cloak and ermine. Next up is his nice big thick moulded beard. And then his head, where he's got a moustache, he's got a, an actual goatee, but you're never going to see that, or his moustache. That's interesting. 
this really nice crown with a nice big piece of hair moulded to it with a nice basin. It's, it's, it's got this very very much got the proper king haircut. I have to say, look at that. And then he's got this accessory of a sword. There we have him in all his glory. The classic king.